Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video in Ibiza. It's about eight o'clock, as you can see in the distance over the top of that ship. The sun is setting and you'll see it's definitely rush hour here in the marinas. Now we'll, we're definitely going to catch some boats docking. However, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the process and what's involved. This sailing yacht is much bigger than this princess and they've been telling them to get the hoot out the way because these guys have just come out of their berth, I think. And this princess, Juliette, which is a charter boat here, was getting right in the way of this lovely big sailing yacht who was undocking from her berth. Now, so what's the process of a boat docking in a marina like Ibiza? Well, what these guys do is they have a VHF built into the boat and the captain will radio in to the marina for them to allocate a marinero to help them dock. Because as you can imagine, when you're on board a yacht or a super yacht, you need some help with the lines. So what happens is, after they've radioed, they will be out there somewhere. They may have just entered the harbour and you see the, the big wall in the distance by that catamaran. Probably before that, they'll give an estimated time of arrival into the marina and the dockmaster who's sitting in there will, will advise them what time they can dock in their berth because there's a shortage usually of marineros. Now marineros are the guys that are in the dinghies who have to do the ground lines which go up to the bow and there's also another marinero who will be on shore who will do the stern lines. So as you can see with this overmarine in the distance, just ahead there, is the little dinghy was just behind it. And that's the marinero who has already got to the berth before these guys have arrived to pull the ground line, which is a small line that sits on the shore attached to the cleat and he then takes it away from the shore out to roughly where he's going to need to pass it up to the crew member. Now you can probably see there is a crew member on the bow of this boat, there'll be one on the stern as well and then comes the little dinghy, let's zoom in. The little dinghy passes up, the, there he is, the ground line up to the, mat, to the crew guy he will then hold it and he'll probably wrap it around the winch and get it ready for when the boat is nearly in its place and there's, there's two lines at the front and two lines at the back so he has to do both the crewman on the front who's controlling the bow he, he, is, he must secure and tie off the bow lines and the whole time they'll be communicating by radio the stern crew member will be talking to the captain just talking him back into place about how many meters he has left until the dock so he doesn't hit the wall he'll then pass the two stern lines if they're on the boat or if they're on the shore the marinero will pass the two stern lines to the crew and he'll tie them off as well there when they're in place and there you go so they'll have two at the front two at the back and on a very windy day I don't know if you can hear this but it is windy today there's a storm coming here in Ibiza and 
what they'll do is they will tie off to spring lines as well. So the stern lines stop it going forward and back, but the spring lines which go diagonally stop it going left and right. So there'll be two extra lines called the spring lines. This reaver here is patiently waiting because there'll be a marinero somewhere who's busy probably with that overmarine we've just seen and that means he will be holding station right there until he gets a call from the control tower to say right reaver whatever your name is they always talk to them by the name of their boat you can now proceed to your berth so I don't know if he's going to be doing that anytime soon I expect so let's see if we can get a close-up of this lovely chase boat so that marinero is he's just past the second bow line up to the that overmarine so his job is nearly done so he'll get a message from the control on where to go next and that's all that's all determined by who's next in queue and their birth number so pontoons are usually a b c d e f g however many there are and then the numbers now one of my favorite boats here is black legend you can see the 50 meter 165 mangusta next to another overmarine now this guy's a chase for another boat if you can see on the back of his t-shirt he has the mothership on there so i suspect she's going to be either docking where he is and he's just holding that position just while they arrive or he's just tied up there briefly while he waits patiently for another boat or his mothership to come in and then dock. As you can see, the heavy, heavy stream of ferries here as well. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it right here and hopefully we'll catch another boat docking in a second okay this big reaver 115 foot is about to dock so he's been holding station now in the channel for a bit. Off goes the little chase boat. That's a chase boat to a boat called M4. Just been chatting to him. I thought it was a different one that he was chased for, but no. M4 is already docked over there. So, okay. Back to the same situation. Marinero has already got the ground lines on his little boat, ready for this guy to spin round. and dock stern too. Chucking out some black smoke, this one. She's probably a few years old now. Stay tuned because there's another much bigger boat coming in which I don't think is going to dock over on this marina but We'll get her cruising past, she's going to go into a Sovereign Marina, which is where all the larger boats, this this uh, Marino beat over this side only has two very large pontoons or, or berths and I'm standing right by them and there's no boats on there at the moment. So there you go, he's spun it round, he'll be doing that all with the engines, so to spin a boat round is really easy because You've got two engines, which means you've got two throttles, controls, 
when he would have come in here he would have used two to go straight on always keeping them in sync you can just push the two together nicely and easily flick it into forward gear and then he would have just pulled the port side engine back into reverse one notch and he would have put the starboard side engine into forward one notch and basically that will spin the boat on its axis pretty much so he's just simply used a little bit of bow thruster there you can see the bubbles at the front just under the bow so that these boats tend to have bow and stern thrusters which just nudges the bow left or right because as you can imagine in a bit of wind you can spin the boat around as much as you like but it's far more effective to use a bow thruster just one or two seconds pushing on the bow thruster and it just pushes the bow over in the direction that you want it there is a storm coming so it's getting a bit windy marinero done his job on the ground line number one he'll just whiz back grab the other ground line some people call them lazy lines crew guy on the front there just Oh, bit of bow thruster still. Crew guy's got one of those lines on pretty tight already by the looks of it. Marinero's done uh, the usual thing. I think he's got both ground lines on him actually. Yep, he's got both, so he'll just pass the second ground line up. Okay, that's boat number two docked, so we've seen an Overmarine and a Reva docked. They'll be pretty much finished in a second. All the boats are going to be coming back into port tonight. Well, saying that, not all of them, because there are some very, very big boats out there. There's Palladium, Ulysses, they're all out at anchor on the south coast of Ibiza and they know there's a front coming in and tomorrow it's going to be stormy all day so I'm quite surprised Palladium even though she has this berth right here one of the super yacht docks 100 meter docks over this side of the harbour she's out unless she starts coming back which she may do we'll check on AIS and come back to you ah, it's our fellow friends play the game Captain Chris up there. Very popular charter boat this. 28 meter sun seeker. It's Chris on the helm up there. Just give him a wave. Hello buddy. <laughs> Dancing your way away. Back to back charter boat this thing popular boat lovely boat these guys top 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 crew if you get on board that boat it's like new one of a few boats the owner has pumping the tunes there crew guys just uh, it's Jose at the back helping the, the other crew guy onto the little rib they've been towing that back much easier to tow the ribs back from out, out at sea, the reason being is because the platform that it goes on that we'll see in a second is it's, it's, it's difficult to get the rib on when you're in a swell or in choppy seas so it's far and it's dangerous as well for the crew far easier just to tow it back and then they will just tie it to the front of the boat after they've birthed. Jose already getting the lines ready as you can see. Oh no, he's, that's the tow line they've used so he's putting that away. He'll go round to the left there and out of the shot. Marineros will be over there ready and waiting to help him. These guys are docked here all year round so they are the locals 
information about play the game you can find online blue water are there central asian i believe popular boat here in ibiza leave you to that one leave you to that one to have a check it out okay we save the best till last this is a mammoth video usually i only get one boat docking but we've we're on our fourth now guys practicals voila okay who knows what these guys do and do you reckon they've been on board the big benetti which is called 1111 i love the name of that it's just so me Okay, it doesn't look like she's docking over here, which is a bit of a shame. But Mr. Practicos, who you can call the harbour pilot, has been on board. Who can see the rope ladder just under the name there? So these pilot captains, or pilots you can call them, what they do is they know this marina like the back of their hands, way better than most captains so actually when it gets to a size a certain size you have to use their services because they do not want crazy captains not knowing what they're doing even though most captains are very very skilled and qualified they don't want you coming in here causing havoc to 1111 i should say i don't know why two two could be called two two i guess 1111 is heading over to the other side, so that's Sovereign Marina. As you can see, she's got no fenders out on the side where the rope ladder is, so she's obviously knows where she's going, and she's probably not going to be docking next to another boat, hence the reason to not have any fenders out. Over there, you can only see two other boats, which are, funnily enough, identical very very I looked closely the other day they're very close match but not quite identical shame 1111 is not docking over here nice Bonetti yacht what we'll see though is she will spin round like I was saying earlier in the video so this time it will be port engine forward might uh, might just be starboard engine in neutral for a moment if she wants to pull the boat round still going forward rather than spin it on its axis yeah I would say that's just starboard into neutral tiny bit of forward gear on the port engine and it will bring the bow round And if she is in a tight space, she could pull the starboard engine back one click to spin it more on its axis rather than it going forward. It's probably doing that right now. As you can see, there's a rather large ferry as to her stern. What I can't see is the marinero in a dinghy. because the marinero needs to help with the bow lines unless she's dropping anchor. Now they don't do that very often here, but one way of docking is you can drop one or two anchors as she spins round, as she lines up to go astern towards the dock. The, oh, I can see them. You won't be able, well, maybe you can right at the bow now. Oh, he's so far away. There's a tiny little dinghy just by the anchor. Like passing lines up now. Pretty profile of boat, isn't it? Side profile. I like it. Most likely the captain is doing all of this, but there is still a chance that the pilot is doing some of it as well. Usually they're just there to take over in case the captain needs them but usually they don't okay they're still doing the bow lines the little dinghy will be taking 
the lines off the boat. Now remember this, the boat, the lines will be on the boat, passing them down with a shackle to the marinero, who will then take them to the mooring buoy, attach the shackles to the mooring buoy, and as the boat goes back, the crew member will release more and more slack and more and more line ready for the captain to know when they're or to, to instruct them when they are in their spot and where the place they're going to stay so that the crew member can tie them up on the winch well put them around the winch get them nice and tight because you imagine there's going to be 30 40 meters of line from the bow out towards that mooring boy he can't pull that by his hand so he winches it as tight as he can one side then he'll lock it off and he'll do the same with the other line meanwhile on the shore there'll be another marinero who will be ready to catch the lines from the stern of the boat there's probably two crew one doing each line and then they'll lock them off They'll just hoop them over the bollard or the cleat, whatever you want to call it, on shore, and then they'll tie them off on the boat again with winch, winching them in nice and tight. Praktikos knows that his colleague is probably nearly done, and when they are nearly in, or when they're in place, he will go up to his rope ladder, and the little man will come down and onto the next job. The job just before this was a huge, oh, we saw it in the video, that huge cargo ferry. Anyway, we're not going to see too much detail from here and it's getting dark. Let's all appreciate this view. Isn't Ibiza so pretty at night? That's the town over there. What an amazing view. Let's have another quick look at what's coming in. I can tell here's a Sunseeker Predator. And what's that behind it? That's another Sunseeker by the looks of it as well in the distance. Quarter to nine here in Ibiza. Still busy, busy, busy. It's nearly the end of August. I'm signing off. I've done a nice long video. Let me know if you like these nice long videos or not. Three or four mixed up, shoved into one. And if you are still watching this, thank you very much for all your support. I do this just because I'm a massive yacht fan and I'm a qualified captain myself, so I know a little bit about boats. I own a boat and it's kept here in Ibiza and I use it as much as I can. I don't often do videos of it or on it. But thanks very much for your support. I'm not here to make money. I'm not here to do anything. This is just a passion. So enjoy the channel. Share it with your mates or other people that might like boat videos. Stay tuned because there's still so much yachting happening in Ibiza this year. And September, Can Yacht Festival and Monaco Yacht Show. I'll be there with my colleagues. If you're there, hit me up, drop us a message. We're going to be dropping some nice cool videos from there. Going to be doing some sea trials, hopefully on some nice big yachts. See you there. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.